I believe the latitude service on Android now will automatically pop up a location if, when you get to that location. Uh, so you don't actually have to search for it to check in. Do you see that as a feature that's going to come to all platforms or to all applications? Is that, is that question for Yeah, well, I'll start, sure. Okay. Um, we're not really focusing on check-in at all, so uh, it's less important to us. I think it'll probably be relevant to Yelp, so I'm going to let her out. I'm going to need you to repeat the question if it works for you. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, right now you have to actively check in when you want to check in, but I know, at least for Latitude for Android, which I, I don't have, that when you go to a location, it'll pick up your location and sort of push you, uh, do you want to check in here versus the other way around. Do you see that feature coming to Yelp or, or becoming sort of the standard feature for check-in services? Um, I can't answer specifically to it because I'm not part of the engineering uh, or product team, but um, we're always looking for ways to make the app more robust. So if it's something that our users want, chances are that it would happen. If it's something that nobody mentions, chances are it would happen. We, we do actually address, we think about these types of things we're doing. I think yeah. if it's a coupon or an offer that's going to come to you, people will probably accept it. There will be a certain percentage of people that will do it, and it's easier to use the regular coupon. However, most people feel the invasion of their privacy is greater than the value of most of the coupon, unless, I mean, this $5 off, you know, $15, $20 for the sushi, yeah, they'll probably do it. But it's going to be like, the, the deals are going to get worse and worse for those types of things because it's just going to become so generic. And I don't think you can sustain that for a long period of time. Maybe Google can, they're great. But I don't see that people are people are already shying away from the whole Gmail and cloud experience because they, they really get nervous about that amount of information being there. And if you get pop-ups every time you're walking around the street, that's just gonna get annoying. Next question. Uh, I think this question is uh, forwarded to Remy and uh, Keller. Uh, I want to see how you guys are planning to monetize. Uh, so there's the virtual appearance in the application. So we use location uh, for location-based discovery to find other people that you would like to communicate with. Uh, we charge for communication, so we support uh, super fast SMS style text messages. We support longer mail messages. We also support support VoIP calls, so uh, two people can voice chat with each other within the application without uh, giving away their phone number. So, like so the, lo the location-based stuff is our discovery element, and all this other messaging stuff, the other app, the app, is, is where it's all going. I think you can get karma points or something. Yes, oh, yeah. the currency within the application. monetization for us. Um, the meeting places that you saw when they popped up there, um, obviously we're going to go through and, and choose, like we're going to your Foursquare application, if you have your Foursquare profile, we'll look at what your most checked into location is around the area that up first. Second, third, and fourth are ones which we can sell, so those are sponsored. Them. We don't want to make it too obvious, but we're going to start getting a sponsorship for those links when we're just suggesting meeting places and things like that. That's one form. Second form is going to be actually through the API, so businesses that actually want to get access to the end user base once it starts growing to a significant amount. Um, classic example, the easiest one would be something like a bank or a credit card company. Um, if they know that uh, some percentage of their clients are actually using this, then they could actually check, they could actually ask you to actually set them on auto reply so that if you're traveling or if you're in another location, they can actually check with you if you're within 50 meters of your car. If you are, transaction clear, so no problem. If you are, possibly a follow up call or a flag transaction, then you have to deal with it. But it will reduce fraud and it will also reduce customer dissatisfaction. So you should ramp up to a very high number, right? We are going to try to ramp up to a fairly high number. Okay, um, there's a question in the back. Someone? Uh, I just want to actually my second part of my question also. <laughs> <laughs> but it also actually goes also to Amy also. This is about like, I, I just go to it every fast. You mentioned like one of the first questions I'm going to ask is, where are you? I guess also the secondary question also comes immediately after is, how are you? Like, what's your current situation is? How are you feeling? Something like that, right? So if you have any thought on that, like immediately after. So if you're not going to cloud based, you're kind of missing that part of like social interaction through Facebook, all other things. 
but through your mobile attitude book, maybe you can uh, do that algorithm through the frequency and timing of the issue. But uh, again, taking to the, uh, the parameters that, uh, for example, hypothetically you have covered all the networks and plan for everything. So you have known that you have these 20 people, but how do you know that they are kind of open to introduction or something? Okay, I'll actually I'll answer your question to start and I'll pass it to Harvey. Um, we've actually thought about this and we um, considered very seriously putting in a status uh, to your Echo Echo profile. Uh, however, maybe it's us or maybe it's the, the user base we have right now. Most people that, I don't know if you remember Skype, Skype used to have status. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. But it's, it's fallen out of use. Like it's really fallen out of use. A lot of people set profiles which aren't true because they don't want people to bother with stuff like that. So I think that um, when it comes down to what we've done as a solution to that is we're incorporating in the version after this, we're incorporating uh, in-app chat so you can quickly ask a question. But I mean, it's really easy to send, to send a text and ask, how are you? And that's something which is pretty much, you're gonna have to tell a person, right? You can't really figure out how you are. Because you can't set a profile that says, I'm sad today or I'm unavailable, because that could change. So you have to actually, it's a dynamic thing. So I think it's better to, try to, better to provide the tools, and I'm sure that your free voice stuff and everything like that is going to help them to address that. But I want to answer. Yeah. Uh, so your question is about regarding status. No, it's not really status. It's not how are you, but the point of view is why it is small. So immediately your program sees that the previous call to your wife or phone is a doctor or something. And then you got your wife's call, right? So your phone immediately does this algorithm. So, okay. How should I approach this call? So that is, I mean, you are, we are all human beings. So that's yeah. a very, very important part of how you are going to interact that. Again, with the dating, you are going to a bar or a restaurant. You okay, say, I see this person is there, but is she or he in a mood to, you know, This is a long discussion that we need to have over beer, and I look forward to doing that with you. So the question but is about social context, basically. Yeah. Right? Uh, let's jump into this afterwards because that would be very cool to dig into, but this probably isn't quite the same time. Yeah, so actually, for you who don't know, I'm. If you guys want to get together, we're going to the courthouse. I'm very sad that you guys could interact with the speakers there. There's a question right here. Um, so, this is just a general question to everyone, so I don't know if we'll be able to answer it, but you've all built up companies that are based on location based services. So I'm wondering, for those of us who work for companies who have, you know, products that might end up in different locations, so whether you're a clothing company, you have a t-shirt that's distributed to various stores, or you're, you know, a chocolate bar, or you're a lottery ticket, or, or whatever, um, and you don't just have one location where your product is, how do you think we can use location-based services from that standpoint, or can we? So I can probably take this plan. Uh, it, so you should really back up and figure out what your goals are. Are your goals distribution? Are they engagement? Uh, if it's in, if it's stuff like distribution, you, you want to be able to connect with all these other platforms that are out there that, that support location, right? And and get your business uh, integrated with them. Uh, if it's engagement, uh, all all of these apps support stuff like geofencing and, and notifications. So, if you could uh, reach your uh, customer in some way, and you know that they're near your shop, and, and maybe you have a chain of stores, and whenever they're in the neighborhood, send them a message and say, hey, you, you are two blocks away from the Japa dog cart. Um, have a Japa dog, right? Or whatever. So, uh, I'm not sure what your exact uh, situation is, but back up and think about your goals. Like, is it just from there and then figure out how you can integrate location and messaging and all, the, all these features that the phones have. So, any more questions? Or? Okay, we'll take one more. Okay. How do you guys all plan to make money? What's your monetization uh, strategy? <laughs> uh, we have virtual currency within the application, so the first part of the application uses location to match. Uh, Singles together, and and the second part of the application is messaging based. So uh, super fast SMS, like as fast as BBM is. Uh, we do longer mail messages, and we do voice.
So you can call other signals on the network without giving up your privacy in most cases. Do you eventually have to start charging men, like once you have a huge network, if there's lots of girls on there? <laughs> We're uh, in the full opportunity business. So. <laughs> Maybe, if you guys are <laughs> If a woman wants to send a message, she pays just as much as the man wants. Okay. It's, it's only good, right? Well, I don't know. That's not how some of you know the previous 2.0 versions of words. So. Um, so Do you guys want to answer that question? Yeah. Bounty yeah. Island is free on the App Store near you if you have an Apple device, and you're welcome to play and have lots of fun. Um, you do spend energy while you dig, and we automatically give you more energy over time because we always want you to have fun playing with us. If you're really excited with Bounty Island, you'd like to play a little bit more than the average user, you're welcome to buy gems. You can convert gems into energy and play more often. Uh, the day that they launched, we were selling gems, which was very cool for us. Okay, so thank you to our speakers. Um, let's give them another round of applause. Or But basically, through uh, build user base and through sponsorship of specific links or uh, locations, uh, corporate applications for things like banks, and then API access open to games developers and other people who actually want to have location enablement on uh, their social networks or games will allow the access to user base, your user base for that. Okay, so just to wrap up the evening, I want to just open the floor up to anybody who wants to make a 30 second announcement. Just Thank you. Hi, I'm Darren. Um, I'm one of the founders of a conference called Northern Voice, which is in this uh, its seventh year. It's a personal social media and blogging conference held at UBC uh, in May. This year, I'm helping to organize uh, something we call the Nonprofit Expo. Which is kind of like a trade show for nonprofits at the conference. And so we invite, this year we're inviting six nonprofits from local nonprofits to come and set up tables on Saturday afternoon and just like talk to the 500 attendees who come to the conference. And lots of the attendees are like so called influencers with large readerships or following. So it's usually attractive to the nonprofits because we ask them afterwards to come um, and spend a few hours with us. So uh, some of you are probably from nonprofits in the room or no nonprofits. You go to northernvoice.ca, you can find a little submission form there and submit. And um, yeah, I encourage you to check it out and come to the conference. If you're interested in the conference, uh, buy a ticket soon because they sell out every year. Will we, will we be doing more mobile stuff this year? Generally, it's blogging, photography. Yeah. I invite you, I, I'm not on the committee this year, so I'm not choosing speakers, but I invite you to submit a mobile session or get somebody to submit mobile sessions because the best way to see the stuff at the conference you want to see is to come. Is to submit. Yeah. What are submission deadlines? Sorry? When are the submission deadlines? Submission deadlines for the nonprofit expo is, I believe, it says on the website, I think it's the end of March. I think you got a month. Yeah, and we're, we're taking some speaker submissions. Well, I'm not, but somebody is taking speaker, speaker submissions. They're over a couple more weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Um, anybody else? Who wants to make an announcement or an interesting thing? Thank you. Hi, I'm Chris. I want to tell you very quickly about a location-based service and product that we've been building. So if you're like me, once in a while you get taxis, and finding a taxi can be a really frustrating process. And, exactly. <laughs> and so we built a product that makes takes a lot of pain points around finding a taxi. It's taxi now. You can pull up your iPhone, pull up your smartphone, you can see taxis on a map, and you can select one you want and watch it drive straight towards you. And yeah, it improves the process. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Eli, and I've got a message, I guess, for all the environment hippies out here in the audience. Um, so I'm involved with the City of Vancouver's Greenest City Camp, which is an unconference model event for uh, basically the 250 greenest, most connected people in town. We're throwing them all into a room and we're going to put them 
up against this crazy, audacious plan the city's built, which is Green to City 2020, yada yada, lots of fun. If you're curious about it, ask me afterwards, I'll tell you lots more. launching an event series for business owners in Coquitlam and Port Moody called Think Thursdays. So if anybody is from out that way and wants to come out on Thursday, it's in Port Moody at 7 p.m. So hit me up on Meetup or on Twitter. My hometown, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Hi, I'm actually Adam So again, um, if you want to join us in the warehouse, uh, it's just down the street, just around the corner, around the block for dinner, drinks, bites feel free to join. Um, so again, a reminder, I think the next net, net Tuesday is on April 1st in uh, Vancouver Public Library. So come on down again and join us. Thank you very much for coming.